Hi, I'm Dave from boyinaband.com and welcome to day 5 of my 7 day song tutorial on trance music. Yesterday in day 4, I taught you how to make 3 epic lead synths for our track. Today in day 5, I'll teach you how to utilize effects to make the track sound more professional, how to create a sweet panning filtered noise effect of your own, and finally how to put in some strings and quiet elements to make things sound even more epic. Okay, let's begin. I'll start with the effects. Right click and create a combinator and name it FX if you can spell it. And then inside that, create a line mixer 6 to 2 and an instance of Redrum Drum Computer. Now, I'm just going to load up some samples into the Redrum instance now. If you don't know how to do this, check out my tutorial on how to load samples into Reason. Okay, so I've got the samples in there. Most of these are from the Razer Effects Pack from PrimeLoops.com, which is full of cool sweeps, crashes, and reverses. So, yes, the effects I've got this boom. This sweep, this reverse here, yep, there we go, and then this laser, another sweep, and finally a nice crash. Also, notice on how some of these effects, I've got the uh, decay gate mode set to 1, so that's gate mode. This means the sample will only play for as long as the note is held down, rather than the note triggering the entirety of the sample, no matter how long it is. This is perfect for reverses, for example, since you want them to stop dead on when the thing they're building up to kicks in. For the crash, I want the tail of it to be a bit more prominent, so I'll right-click and create an M-Class compressor underneath this mixer. So we're using it as an effects device. Then, I'll run the crash channel, press tab to look at the back, from the back of Redrum into a spare channel in the mixer. And if I go to the front again, I can just dial in the compression with that auxiliary knob. I'll take the input gain and ratio right up, and the threshold down to about 25 decibels. Just to bring the level of the tail of the crash up. So if we have a listen to the crash now... There. That tail is a lot more prominent. If you want to control the level of the effects, moving them into individual channels in the mixer is a good way to do it. You can control the level from the level knob in the Redrum instance, but this can be a bit fiddly. And with the mixer you can dial in effects like this compression. Remember, dialing in effects this way doesn't change the original sound, it only adds the effect to the signal chain in addition to the original sound, using this aux return here. Ok, now I'll show you how I arrange things effects wise. I make a new note lane for each effect, then draw an area and draw a note in for that lane. This way I can easily move and copy individual effects without having to make multiple complex sequences. So I'll show you how that's done. To make a new note lane, right click an existing note lane and click new note lane. Simple as that, and there it is. Make sure you name the note lanes or things will get confusing fast. So I'll just name these now and put in the samples. OK, I'll show you an example of how much better things sound with effects. Here, I've got the progression from the intro into the first breakout. I'll be explaining about the arrangement in day 6, so don't worry too much about that yet. Without any effects, it's kind of a weak transition. Let's take a listen. See, it doesn't really flow and it doesn't feel very professional there. Even with just the crash in there, it would be lacking. But listen with all the effects in here. See how much more powerful, professional and interesting it sounds? To me, effects are one of the most overlooked things by new producers. A few well-chosen samples can really add a brilliant finishing touch that brings the track up to that next level of professionalism. One thing to be careful of though, with samples like this laser effect, don't overuse it. It'll gradually stop being that cool effect and begin to become that annoying noise. Alrighty, let's go on to this whooshy noise effect that we'll use to fill out our track in the quieter sections. Don't forget to rate this video before you move on to part 2.